This is the BP2, a button plate from US based Turn Racing. A button plate's job, if you're not already sure, is to provide the essential buttons, shifter pedals and gadgetry you need for sim racing when you're using a custom steering wheel rim. They're designed to sit in between the steering wheel you're using and the hub you're mounting it to. A lot of sim racing brands have their own button plate solutions you can buy, but a lot of them only work with their own platform. If you want something a little bit different, something independent, the BP2 is one of your options. It costs $317 plus tax and shipping if you order in direct from Turn in the US. But if you're in the UK, like myself, the simplest way to buy would be from a reseller such as Race Anywhere, skipping the long distance shipping and import, they have it for £315, excluding VAT. When viewed in isolation, this can seem pretty expensive for what it is, but button plates just seem to cost a lot. This is far from the most expensive one you can get. There are reasons why this still feels worthy of that. It has some interesting pros and cons. So let's take a look and see what it's all about. Before continuing, be aware that Turn Racing supplied this BP2 for free for me to test and review, and I've had it for quite some time. I'm talking over a year. Hopefully you'll find me to be fair and objective, covering good points and bad. If you do proceed to buy a BP2 or anything from Turn Racing, using the links in the description to travel to retailers helps support my work at no added cost to you and thanks for considering doing so. On we go. In the box you get a coiled connection lead, a bag of wheel screws, a USB extension lead, the BP2 button plate itself and some stickers for customization and labeling. The plate itself is quite slender and lean in terms of sizing. The casing is made of injection molded nylon, which although it's plastic, it's much more the kind of plastic that you would find on expensive camera gadgets rather than kids toys. It's very strong and feels hard wearing. It's equipped with two shifter paddles, six standard push buttons, two rotary dials and two funky switches, although they can also be used as push buttons, bringing the practical button count to 10, which is plenty. The paddle shifters sit outboard to the rear of the plate and can be extended by about 2cm to better suit the diameter and reach of whatever custom wheel you're using. The rotary dials and funky switches look and feel like the sort of thing you'd find on someone's very expensive drone controller or something like that. They don't feel at all cheap to me, they're nice to use. The only real blind spot the BP2 has that could turn people away on clear functional grounds is the lack of dual clutch paddles. They're of great importance if you're a fan of high powered series with standing starts such as formula cars or cup cars. That's a fair chunk of people that might pass over the BP2 purely for that reason and I can't argue with that because I'd make the same argument if it were me. Not everyone demands dual clutch paddles, but those that do need to be aware that the BP2 doesn't have them. Connectivity to your computer is achieved using a coiled cable, which is of high quality and of decent length. It's quick to connect and disconnect from the wheel if needed, as it uses an RJ45 style end with a clip. I've never ever had a single dropout or lost connection with this method. You also don't really tend to notice the cable, it just does what it does. Maybe sometimes it'll tenderly stroke your knee, but you could wind it around your hub once to take up the slack. Either way, if you've been skeptical of wired wheels, then it's really not noticeable, you'll be fine. Button plates have a tricky job to do. They have to be able to accommodate wheels of various shapes, cuts and profiles as best as possible, while still trying to look like they were made for the job. Turn's approach to this is clearly to leave a light footprint and try not to get in the way, either physically or visually. Because of that top to toe black design, along with the fairly small earlobes housing the switches and buttons, the BP2 itself almost disappears into the shadows when it's got a wheel rim mounted on top. At least this is the case until the stickering begins. More on that in a little bit. When mounting the BP2, you may have to pay some consideration to what system you are mounting it onto, but the compatibility list on Turn's website does tell you if you need anything extra to combine whatever hub or rim you've got your eyes on. It might have some blind spots, but it's a lot of info to start with. With the Fanatec Podium Hub, for example, you need to buy an additional 10mm spacer in order to provide enough clearance so that the data port doesn't collide with the Podium Hub, which means you may need longer wheel screws too. If I was connecting this to a Moser or NRG quick release, you might not need a spacer, but the shifter modules may have to be moved a few millimetre outwards to accommodate. If I happen to be buying an OMP Racing GP wheel to mount onto the BP2, the list tells me I'll be needing a 5mm spacer. 
Just something to be aware of before you buy. Check that list first to check you don't need any extra bits for the wheel you've got your eye on. You're already going a little bit off-piste making a custom wheel anyway, so I don't think a bit of extra tinkering to line things up will phase you. The key is whether you can get the answers you need beforehand. However, Turn does make very good rims that shouldn't be overlooked. My favourite wheel to this day, in terms of hand feel and ergonomics, is the Turn R320, which is what you've seen in almost all the clips so far. It's quite hard sometimes to pin down exactly why I'm attached to this thing in particular, but I can think of a couple of reasons. Obviously the diameter, 320mm, when you pair that up with a powerful wheelbase, it just works best with my brain. Uh, these stippled rubber grips, they mean that it can be used with or without gloves and your hands ain't gonna get slippy and slide all over the shop. The molded rubber elements you can see behind the hand grips, you don't see them from the front, but at the back, they help with the grip so much. So if you don't like using gloves, this is probably a good contender for you. The BP2 and turn rim combo work well together, as they should, and if you do take this path, then there are a few varieties of sticker sheets available that can be used to dress up your wheel assembly and give it an entirely new look and character. These sheets cost about a tenner each, they're printed and cut from hardware and vinyl, which makes it possible to peel and reuse them. They leave no residue behind and are difficult to tear. I've applied and removed these stickers many times and they've come off completely intact. As you can see, they have a big impact on the character of the wheel. It's like a whole new thing. Turn also saw fit to produce a bunch of track map stickers that you can place onto the center of the wheel via a removable magnetic plate. A blank marker board center plate also exists, handy for keeping track of certain notes or just keeping tabs on your to-do list. These are fun little customizations, the kind of accessories you didn't know you needed until you saw them. In terms of what the BP2 is like to use, I think I qualify to give an opinion here. I've used the BP2 for many hours since it was sent to me all the way back in December 2022, courtesy of Zach at Turn Racing. Sorry it took me so long, Zach. Guess I really went in on the extended test here. It just works. It's always given me the impression of high durability and dependability. Nothing's gone wrong with it, and I like using it. Shifts feel punchy, not as luxurious as some of the shifter models have used, mostly because there's quite a long arc to them, so once you break the magnetic coupling there's a lot of fresh air in the rest of the pull. Not as tight as the Acertec shifters or Fanatec Advanced paddle module for example, but not once did I miss a shift, so this is just a question of taste more than function. The dials feel crisp and cold to the touch and lovely to use. The two fixed dials at the bottom have a much more pronounced indent as you twist them. I use them to flick through display pages and lap delta modes. The two funky switches have a finer or lighter indent and I use them to navigate adjustments and menus within those display pages. There's enough controls on board to ensure I don't have to reach for the keyboard during a race. The jobs for BP2 claims to do, it does well and without fault or fanfare, but there are still things to be aware of. Obviously no clutch paddles is a pretty clear cut dividing line, deal breaker for some, not a problem for others, no need to debate it. There are no rev lights aboard for BP2 either, this is more a matter of immersion than practicality, but the fact remains that there will be no light show here, presumably to keep cost and complexity under control, because rev lights require detailed communication between BP2 and your computer, whereas buttons and shifters don't. People can't have problems with a feature that isn't equipped. The buttons do have a tiny bit of free float, which means they could potentially rattle under the right conditions, meaning under strong, high frequency feedback. The Fanatec McLaren GT3 wheel is known for this. The two bunny ears at the top of the plate also have a tiny bit of give to them when you press the top buttons because of their relatively outboard position, causing the casing to flex. You do kind of feel it compared to the buttons at the bottom which are more solid. Doesn't affect me and I don't mind one bit, but this is a review and I'm supposed to convey the whole product as best I can, ain't I? There's only one real flaw that I can point to with the BP2, one design flaw anyway, and that's with the paddle shifters. Because they only use one thumb screw to fix the paddle in place, it means that if you apply the right forces, you can actually waggle it when it's fully extended because there's nothing really holding it in place other than that one thumb screw. And when you do it up by hand, you can't really do it up tight enough to hold it rock solid, so I've nipped it up with a screwdriver and it's as tight as it's gonna get, and you can still waggle the paddle a little bit. Now, that ain't never gonna affect you in the middle of a race. It's never affected me, it's never waggled loose, 
but it's the fact that you can do it at all which is just going to be disconcerting to some people when they take it out of the box and start messing with all the things on it like I did one of the first things I noticed was I could I could just waggle this when the paddle is fully extended nipped up by hand I could still waggle it so if it had two grub screws like all other uh, paddle and button boxes do that I know of if it had two grub screws it wouldn't be able to do that so if you get this BP2 you take it out of the box and you waggle the paddles it ain't broken it's just a flaw in the design which isn't going to affect you in practice but it's still a bit silly to see so let's talk for a second about who would buy a BP2 and why Turn racing themselves are a name that you probably won't actually hear about until you're already in the sim racing scene and encountered their branding somewhere or been recommended by someone. In my eyes, you choose turn racing equipment to be a little bit different. It's a small but dedicated US based company that from every angle I look at seems to be very much entitled to the status of for sim racers by sim racers. So there's that element of joining an owner's club of a brand that is still fairly small, assembles their equipment in-house, takes a lot of care and pride in what they do, with strong after-sales support that you can easily reach. If there's ever been a complaint about Turn's customer service, I haven't seen it, and that's where you viewers come in. Tell me in the comments if you have any comments about Turn or their products, good or bad, it's very helpful to those that may follow your trail. A robot might not choose a BP2, but sim racing enthusiasts might. It's a slightly unusual choice and some people take a lot of pleasure solely in that fact. Sometimes we like to stand apart from the crowd, but that's only a good move if the products are made with care and this clearly is. I like the BP2 in part because it just works, in part because it's understated yet can be injected with tons of character if you want, and in part because of who makes it and those things combine to make it a worthy button plate to consider. And that's it for the time being. If you enjoyed this, remember to give that like button a bop, subscribe for more, and check out links to everything seen in this video in the description below. Thanks again for watching to the end, cheers again.